Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and uh, hey we're going to uh, scan the bands once again with the Texan H501X and what I'll do in the next few days I'll scan also with other radios so you guys that have the same radio will maybe find tips or find uh, ways of using it that you haven't really been able to um, you know measure or been able to understand well. Uh, from what I understand, there's quite a lot of people that have these portable receivers that they got, but kind of have a hard time getting you know them working properly and doing all the stuff they need to do. So I think these videos are going to be kind of educational at the same time. And of course, I'll be commenting also of what is online, what is what we hear on the uh, frequency ranges. So that is going to also help you understand what's out there at the same time. So, uh, we're going to tune from 3000 to um, 4000 kilohertz in this video. And then I'll do another video from 4 to 5, and one from 5 to 6, and so on. We're going to go 1 megahertz at a time, so that uh, you'll know what to expect on the frequency ranges we tune around. So, the radio used is the Texan H501X. The uh, antenna is the MLA30 outdoors. And uh, once the weather gets more interesting outside to do videos outside, I'll uh, try to do these same videos, but using only the telescopic antenna. So, what I do, because this is utility, mostly utilities and ham radio, um, I will, of course, switch. First of all, to upper sideband to scan on a range like 3 megahertz. Knowing where and what to expect helps you in understanding it, what mode to use. Um, when you're outside of international broadcast bands, most of it is in upper sideband. Now, there is a 90 meter band broadcast band here, but there's a lot of utilities. And Once we move to the 80 meter band above 3500, it'll go to lower sideband. So here we go, 3000 to 4000 kilohertz on the Texan H501X. One note here is I usually tune one kilohertz at a time because I could fine tune, but this would be dreadfully slow and take an enormous amount of time. So what I'll do is I'll tune to one kilohertz at a time. And if I find something interesting, I might fine tune with um, a more precise tuning set. Bottom part of 3 megahertz, uh, you can expect some aeronautical communications. Uh, there are some uh, aeronautical stuff going on there with uh, 3016, for example, which is New York. 3016 is New York. Um, aer aeronautical for um, Route A, North Atlantic Ocean. Um, so there could be some communications coming through on the bottom part of 3 megahertz for that. Go slowly, because you never know what to expect. There could be some things that you don't know what they are. They're not listed anywhere. And by going slowly, you're sure you're not going to miss out on anything. So 3100 kilohertz, I'm going up. CHU time signal on 3330, so that's one uh, frequency where you have a time signal from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. This is usually D frequency, I hear it, as it has a lot of ground wave on the lower frequencies. By the way, as we start tuning 3 megahertz and up, this is shortwave. There's 
show back to upper sideband. Very weak right now, but uh, sometimes I hear it better. 3413 is uh, one of the frequencies for the uh, Shannon. We hear it very lightly here. Shannon weather station out of Ireland. In the range of about 34 to 3500 kilohertz, um, you'll hear aeronautical stuff. You could hear aeronautical communications. There's a lot, in Europe particularly, you guys might hear more of that. Um, there's a lot of Russian single letter um, channel markers that exist in that area. And of course, there's a lot of communications for aeronautical from around the world, so depending where you are. Just tune around slowly and make sure that you uh, check out, not missing out on anything. Scan, reg you know, like if you are in a rage like here and you say, well, people tell me there's aeronautical communications. Don't hesitate to go back up. And if you hear nothing, don't hesitate to just go back down and back up and just sweep that range a few times. So that if you hear nothing, you'll at some point hear something. It's not because you hear nothing on a band. There's nothing there. It could be, especially with utilities, there are so many signals that are intermittent that you could be just in that time when nothing is happening. But at some point, you will hear communications. For example, 3445 is the Caribbean A route for um, New York air traffic control so if you leave your radio there for a while you're bound to hear some communications from here so it's always a good idea to go up go down a little bit and you know if you miss out for example what I would do here I'm going into the 80 meter amateur band I would probably go down again and see if I am missing out on anything special that I've not heard Like I said, never know what could pop up if you uh, tune around and uh, you've missed some communications of some sort. Utilities are intermittent, so it's easy to go on and move on and not even, uh, you know, fall on communications while you're tuning around. Like here, you know, when I say we have to tune slowly, Look at Shannon Volmet here, how, how it's very low, it's very weak, but it is there. So if you tune too fast, you might just completely miss out. Also, lower frequencies like 3 megahertz, remember that they are frequencies that are mostly nighttime. So that means that in you know broad daylight and midday you're not going to hear much right now it's still daylight outside but the sun is setting as we speak so there's you know this band is starting to open up and we're starting to hear communications coming out of it like for example three four eight five and I know personally then and that, that in about 10 or 20 seconds from now, we're going to have the uh, Gander um, weather station. Here we go. So this is Gander, Newfoundland, Canada. And now 80 meter amateur band. So the bottom part, sometimes I'll see an upper side band until I hear the digital modes. So the 
these are all the different modes, FT8 and so on. Thirty-five eighty-one. This is the RRL's uh, Morse code training. The station W1EW. And starting at thirty-six hundred, then I'll go to lower sideband because the this band is in lower sideband, eighty meters. band at the top here 38885 even 3865 that's interesting there's an overload here a mixing product it seems so this is AMMs you gotta also remember that the top part here in Europe, 3,900 to 4,000, is in uh, an um, international broadcast band for stations. So even though here in North America we'll hear mostly hams, you might be stumbling upon a European broadcaster. For example, here, 3,945. There's something there. So depending on what you want to hear, you might hear stuff from the European broadcast band here, even, even here in the, especially in the east coast of North America. So that's the tuning from 3000 to 4000 kilohertz with some comments and observations and the way I do it also that might help you understand a little more how I do uh, the broadcasts and the, uh, the shortwave scanning, basically. On the Texan H501X receiver using the MLA30 loop antenna. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.